have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a mall for four years rent free? The thought has never crossed my mind, but with the housing market going haywire right now and just coming to the conclusion that no matter how hard I work, I would probably never own a house. I am starting to look at alternatives. I'm starting to look at sleeper vans, going off grid, other options that don't require rent. Journey with me as we explore living in a mall. My name is Teresa and this is Millennial Housing. So during the weekend, I discovered the Substack newsletter, Cafe Anne, and the lady running the newsletter goes around Manhattan, Brooklyn, and she interviews her fellow New Yorkers, gathering their personal stories. A headline caught my eye, a secret apartment in the mall. She interviews this lady, Adriana Young, who tells her of the time 15 years ago, early 2000s, when she and her group of friends created a secret apartment in the Providence Place Mall in Rhode Island. They live there rent free without being discovered. It's kind of like a squatting situation and it gets so interesting from there. During lockdown, I have been binging dead mall content. I've been binging Retail Archaeology's channel. I've been binging This Is Dan Bell. I just feel really nostalgic for shopping malls, for the shopping mall culture. For basically the 80s and 90s, that's one thing that you have to know about millennials. We love the 80s and the 90s. It was the last time most of us were happy. It was like the last play date before things all went awry. So that's why we have so much nostalgia for that time. So with dead mall content, the retail apocalypse coinciding with a bizarre spike in the real estate market, the huge demand in home ownership and home buying a huge lack of supply in housing. And as I speak now, the feds have increased the interest rate. Mortgages are up, but the prices of houses are not going down. We are in a K-shaped recovery where wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few. If you weren't able to own a home so that you can leverage, so you could sell that home at a higher price and then trade up to another home, then, then you're screwed. In addition to houses becoming unaffordable, Rents have all gone up, so if you were thinking about saving for your mortgage, um, good luck. All that money is going to your landlord. So things are a little dire for those of us who were not able to win at the game of real estate musical chairs. So I've been thinking about alternatives. Recently, I learned that these people back in 1999, they were able to live in a mall. This is probably old news. It's probably been broadcast before, but it's news to me. And I would like to share that with you. Living in a mall. So between 1997 and 1999, construction of the Providence Place Mall in Rhode Island took place and the local artist Michael Townsend noticed a irregularity in the construction. A little tucked in slender little alleyway he discovered after squeezing himself through the little space. If you go deeper there is actually a 750 foot room unnoticed by the mall employees and unnoticed by mall security. It would be a perfect hangout and that's all it was to begin with. One by one he and his friends they brought in some furniture they brought in a sofa that they picked up off the street. They even brought in a china cabinet, which is a monumental feat. In order to get into the room, there's about like a 10 foot drop. And they had to exercise significant elbow grease to actually move furniture in there. And it became somewhat of a challenge to see how homey that they can make this secret room. I have always wanted to discover a secret room. It really tickles my childish imagination. Because as a child, I've always dreamed of moving into a rambling mansion and discovering secret passageways behind the bookshelf, secret rooms that will hopefully not lead into a horror situation, but like a quaint kid movie situation. They weren't serious about actually making the secret apartment their home, but as months went by, they thought, hey, this could be a viable option for living rent-free and to see how much we can get away with it. So only the tiny group, five to eight people, knew about it and they were not 
not allowed to tell anybody. So one of the things I find very remarkable, not only did they decorate, but there was three walls um, to begin with and they built a fourth wall. One by one, they moved in cinder blocks, they mixed cement. They were able to transport their construction materials in broad daylight because you can enter through the movie theater, through the parking lot, and they just acted like they belonged, like they were part of the construction crew of the mall or something and nobody was the wiser. And they were even able to obtain electricity. They used the mall's electricity. The mall's electricity went on for 24 hours, but they did not have plumbing. Thank goodness for the late night movie theater because that's where they would use the bathroom at night. They ate leftovers from the food court. So a lot of people didn't finish their fries. Well, the group finished your fries. They ate your pizza bites. They ate your bagel bite, your Auntie Anne's pretzels. And they spent a lot of time at Barnes and Nobles. Went on for four years. They were getting very comfortable, a bit overconfident. They were starting to nest. They were even thinking about a way to incorporate plumbing into this secret apartment. They were also thinking about getting a toilet in there, really making a home of it. But as with all good things, the secret apartment era came to an end. A couple of security guards, they were new hires, so they were a lot more motivated than your veteran security guards. They went snooping around the mall. They found the hidden entrance and decided to kick down the door or the plaster wall. And boy, were they shocked because they found a homey little hideaway. They took a photo album, they stole their PlayStation, and they laid in wait to entrap the secret squatters. So when the group came back, they were shook to find that their secret annex for about four years was discovered and only personal items were taken, no valuables were taken, but personal items, evidence, proof were removed from the premises. They knew their time was up, so they had to be super careful and they only came in at night. But then one day, Michael Townsend, during daylight hours, he brought his friend, a Hong Kong-based visiting artist to the secret apartment just to show off what they were able to accomplish. And there they were busted. He was arrested, charged with probably like breaking, entering, trespassing, misdemeanor. A lengthy court battle ensued. The corporation, the owners of the mall threw the book at him. And as their lawyers were laying out all the evidence against them, the china cabinets, the sofa, various homey knickknacks that they were able to smuggle into the secret lofted apartment, the judge was so tickled by this. He let Michael Townsend off, citing that he decorated it. He was not really harming the mall. He decorated an unused space. As a result, Townsend was banned forever. They slapped him with a restraining order and he was not able to even jog on his daily path because it's within the radius. I, like the judge, find it so endearing. Nobody was really hurt here. It was a secret room. It was never going to be used to begin with because it wouldn't have been leased out for a store. At best, it could be used as a storage closet of some kind. If a space is not used, why should it be a crime to use it? I'm not issuing my stamp of approval on squatters, but there's different levels of moral ambiguity here. You're breaking the law, but if I were the judge, I don't really have that much hope anymore. Now I'm just looking at alternatives to living. I've mentioned that I live in Southern California. Well, the median price of a home where I live is a million so things are looking a little little sketchy right now. I've been watching content on YouTube on how to live in a van. Essentially, it's kind of like being homeless, but it's homeless on your terms instead of like homeless living on the street. I think it'll be fun.